Hey everyone, welcome to part 14 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will implement a party system. So instead of hard coding the player Pokemon, we will be able to use a Pokemon from our party. And if that Pokemon faints, the next one in the party will be sent out. Special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me in this journey. So you can support the making of the series by becoming a Patreon and get access to some cool rewards. So let's get started. So right now we are hard coding the player and enemy Pokemon in our battle system. So if you look at the battle unit script of the player unit or the enemy unit, you can see that we are hard coding the Pokemon and the level here. So instead of this, we need to set the Pokemon dynamically. So in our battle unit script, Let's remove the serialized field for Pokemon base and level. And instead of hard coding it, we will pass the Pokemon as a parameter while calling the setup function. So I'll just assign the Pokemon passed in the parameter. So next we need to actually pass the Pokemon while calling this function. So for, so for that, first we need to create a Pokemon party. So inside the scripts folder, inside Pokemon, I'll create a new script called Pokemon party. And inside the script, we need a list of Pokemons. And I'll make it serialized field so that we can set it from the inspector. So now let's attach the script onto our player game object. But down here you can see that we have an error inside our battle system. So our Pokemon party script won't compile until we fix this error. So let's double click on this and it will show us the error. So it's because we are not passing the Pokemon inside the setup function even though we, even though we changed it here. So let's just comment these two setup functions for now. And we'll come back to this once we are done with our party system. So now Unity should compile the script and we can attach it to our player game object. So here you can see that the list of Pokemons are not visible, even though we made that a serialized field inside the Pokemon party. So if we look inside the Pokemon class, we can see that Pokemon base and level are not serialized fields. So we can't use this short way of defining properties when we want to show it in the inspector. So let's create separate private variables for this. And I'll make it a serialized field so that it will be shown in the inspector. I'll also create one for the level. So now inside the property, we just need to return the private variable. So let's also do this for the level property. And finally, we need to add system.serializable attribute on top of our Pokemon class because Classes will only be shown in the inspector if we use this attribute. So we do have an error here in the constructor, but we actually don't need to assign this from the constructor anymore since we'll be doing it from the inspector. So let's remove these lines. And the constructor will not be called anymore because we'll be creating objects of the Pokemon class from the inspector itself. So which means all this initialization code will not be run. So instead of doing this from the constructor, we'll do it inside a function called init, which stands for initialization. So we can add all our initialization code inside here. So now if we go back to Unity, you can see that the list of Pokemons has appeared in the inspector. So let's say I have two Pokemons initially in my party. 
and for the first one I'll choose Charmander of level 7 and for the next one I'll choose a Bulbasaur of level 3 so these will be the Pokemons in our hand when we start the game so now when starting a battle we can choose one of the Pokemon from this list as the player Pokemon instead of just hard coding it so next what can we do about the enemy Pokemon in the battle so in Pokemon games each area will have a list of wild Pokemons and when the player walks through the grass we should choose the wild Pokemon in that area randomly so we need a script to store all the wild Pokemons in an area so inside scripts I'll just create a new folder called gameplay and inside this folder I'll create a new script called map area so this script will store all the wild Pokemons in this area so we need a list of Pokemons and I'll call it wild Pokemons and I'll also create a public function which will return a random wild Pokemon and I'll just return wild Pokemons of I just need to pass a random index here so I'll use random dot range of 0 and the size of the list which we can get from the count property so in the future we'll write better algorithms that will return random pokemons based on the rarity but for now i want to focus on the party system and this should work fine so let's go back to unity and let's assign the map area script to our grid you can actually assign this to whichever game object you want and let's say there can be two different wild pokemons in this region so first one is a Bulbasaur of level 5 and the second one will be a Bulbasaur of level let's say 7 I guess it's time I need to add more Pokemons all I have is a Bulbasaur and a Charmander so now even though we are creating the Pokemons from map area and the player party we are not calling the function to initialize it so remember we created a function so we just have to call this function for that so inside my pokemon party in the start function i loop through all the pokemons and initialize each one of them and in case of the wild pokemons we just have to initialize them in this function because they are only relevant in the battle so first I'll store this in a variable and then initialize it before actually returning it so now in the battle system we need to pass the player party and a wild pokemon while calling the start battle function so let's create a parameter for the player party and one for the wild pokemon and let's just show that in private variables and let's assign the parameters to our variables so we'll have to use the this keyword since the name of the parameter and our variables are same so I'll say this dot player party equal to player party and also do the same for the wild Pokemon so now since we have the player and the wild Pokemon we can pass them into the setup function of the battle unit so to the setup function of the enemy unit I'll pass the wild Pokemon and for the player unit we can't pass the entire party we just we will have to choose a Pokemon from the party so what we'll do is we pass the first Pokemon in the party that is not fainted 
So let's create a function inside the player party in order to return that. We'll create a public function called get healthy Pokemon. I named it healthy Pokemon because we should not return any Pokemon that's fainted. So how can we find a healthy Pokemon? One way is we can use a for loop to loop through all the Pokemons in the party and check if the HP is greater than zero to make sure it is healthy. So yeah, a for loop would work fine, but let me show you an easier way of doing it. So we'll use link instead of for loop. So we can say Pokemons dot where. So you can see that where function does not exist right now. This is because we have to import the namespace for link. So I'll just use control dot and import link. So now to the where function, we need to pass a condition. So the condition we want to check is if the HP is greater than zero. So we can pass it like x arrow x dot HP greater than zero. So if you have never used link before, the where function will loop through the list of Pokemons we have and will return the list of Pokemons which satisfies this condition. So this line of code will return all the Pokemons that are not fainted in our party. But we don't need all the Pokemons. We just need the first one that is not fainted. So for that, I'll say dot first or default. And we actually need to return this. So now this function will return the first Pokemon in our party that is not fainted. And in case if all of the Pokemons in our party are fainted, then this code will return null. So that's how this works. So let's actually call this inside our battle system. So inside player unit dot setup, I'll call player party dot get healthy Pokemon. So next we'll go to our game controller where our start battle function is called. We'll have an error because we are not passing the player party and the wild Pokemon. So I can get the player party from the player controller since both of them are components of the player game object so i can say player controller dot get component of player party of uh, pokemon party so this will return the pokemon party component on the player game object and to get the wild pokemon first we need to grab a reference to the map area so i'll do it by find object of type map area which will return the game object with the map area and i'll use the get component to actually get the script and finally i'll call the get random wild pokemon function which will return a random wild pokemon so let's pass this into our start battle function and that should be it so now if we start a battle, the first Pokemon from our party will be selected as the player Pokemon. And one of these Pokemons will be selected as the enemy Pokemon. So let's test that. If I walk through the grass. Okay, you can see that. Level 7 Charmander was the first Pokemon in my party and it was set as the player Pokemon. And a Bulbasaur of level 5 was set as the enemy Pokemon. So if we fight the wild Pokemon. So I lost some HP in the battle. And now if I try to start another battle. You can see that my player Pokemon starts with the HP that was left from the previous battle. So let's look at what happens when the player Pokemon faints. Okay, it should faint in this attack. So now we went back to the free roam state, even though we should have been able to use our second Pokemon. We will do that in a moment. 
but let me show you something else if we start a new battle then we will send out the second pokemon in the party since our first pokemon has fainted so that's working just as how we want it so next let's implement the logic to send out the next pokemon in the party when the first pokemon faints so in our battle system inside enemy move if the player pokemon faints we are just calling uh, on battle over to finish the battle so instead of doing that first we need to check if there is any other healthy pokemon in the party so we can do that by using player party dot get healthy pokemon and i'll store the pokemon in a variable called next pokemon so if next pokemon is not equal to null which means there is actually a healthy pokemon in our party then we should send out that pokemon for the battle and otherwise if all of our pokemons have fainted then we'll just call on battle over and return false indicating that the player lost the battle so in here we have to write the code to send out the next pokemon so it's kind of like the code in the setup battle so let me just copy paste that so we're just calling setup on the battle unit and setting the data on the hud setting the move, names of the move in the dialog box and all that so we don't need to do this for the enemy pokemon since we are only changing the player pokemon and for the pokemon we should use the next pokemon that we got from here let me just change that everywhere and for the dialogue i'll just say go and the name of the pokemon and finally we should go to the player action state where the player can choose to fight or run so let's go back to unity and test this so let me start a battle let me keep attacking until my player pokemon faints so i need to start another battle and do this till my player pokemon faints okay so my first pokemon fainted and we did send out the second pokemon in the party so we can also try fighting with our second pokemon all right so everything work just as we wanted so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we will look at how to create a party selection screen and let the player switch the pokemons in between a battle so before you go make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video